indenture from wilhelm meister's apprenticeship by johann goethe translated by thomas carlyle this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. this is from book seven chapter nine on returning to lothario's castle wilhelm found that changes had occurred jarno met him with the tidings that lothario's uncle being dead the baron had himself set out to take possession of the heritage you come in time said he to help the abbey and me lothario has commissioned us to purchase some extensive properties of land in this quarter he has long contemplated the bargain and we now got cash and credit just in season the only point which made us hesitate was that a distant trading house had also views upon the same estates at length we have determined to make common cause with it as otherwise we might outbid each other without need or reason the trader seems to be a prudent man at present we are making estimates and calculations and must also settle economically how the lands are to be shared so that each of us may have a fine estate the papers were submitted to our friend the fields meadows houses were inspected and though jarno and the abbey seemed to understand the matter fully wilhelm could not help desiring that teresa had been with them in these labors several days were spent and wilhelm had scarcely time to tell his friends of his adventures and his dubious fatherhood this incident to him so interesting they treated with indifference and levity he had noticed that they frequently in confidential conversation while at table or in walks would suddenly stop short and give their words another application whereby showing at least that they had on the anvil many things which were concealed from him he bethought him of what lydia had said and he put the greater faith in it as one entire division of the castle had always been inaccessible to him the way to certain galleries particularly to the ancient tower with which externally he was so well acquainted he had often sought and hitherto in vain one evening jarno said to him we can now consider you as ours with such security that it were unjust if we did not introduce you deeper into our mysteries it is right that a man when he first enters upon life should think highly of himself should determine to attain many eminent distinctions should endeavor to make all things possible but when his education has proceeded to a certain pitch it is advantageous for him that he learn to lose himself among a mass of men that he might learn that he learn to live for the sake of others and to forget himself in an activity prescribed by duty it is then that he first becomes acquainted with himself for it is conduct alone that compares us with others you shall soon see what a curious little world is at your very hand and how well you are known in it tomorrow morning before sunrise be dressed and ready jarno came at the appointed time he led our friend through certain known and unknown chambers of the castle then through several galleries till at last they reached a large old door strongly framed with iron jarno knocked the door went up a little so as to admit one person jarno shoved in our friend but did not follow him wilhelm found himself in an obscure and narrow stand all was dark around him and when he tried to go a step forward he found himself hemmed in a voice not altogether strange to him cried enter and he now discovered that the sides of the place where he was were merely hung with tapestry through which a feeble light glimmered into him enter 
cried the voice again he raised the tapestry and entered the hall in which he now stood appeared to have at one time been a chapel instead of the altar he observed a large table raised some steps above the floor and covered with a green cloth hanging over it on top of this a drawn curtain seemed as if it hid a picture on the sides were spaces beautifully worked and covered in with fine wire netting like the shelves of a library only here instead of books a multitude of rolls had been inserted nobody was in the hall the rising sun shone through the window right on wilhelm and kindly saluted him as he came in be seated cried a voice which seemed to issue from the altar wilhelm placed himself in a small armchair which stood against the tapestry where he had entered there was no seat but this in the room wilhelm had to be content with it though the morning radiance dazzled him the chair stood fast and he could only keep his hand before his eyes but now the curtain which hung above the altar went asunder with a gentle rustling and showed within a picture frame a dark empty aperture a man stepped forward at it in a common dress saluted the astonished looker-on and said to him do you not recognize me among the many things which you would like to know do you feel no curiosity to learn where your grandfather's collection of pictures and statues are at present have you forgot the painting which you once so much delighted in where think you is the sick king's son now languishing wilhelm without difficulty recognized the stranger whom in that important night he had conversed with at the inn perhaps continued his interrogator we should now be less at variance in regard to destiny and character wilhelm was about to answer when the curtain quickly flew together strange said wilhelm to himself can chance occurrences have a connection is what we call destiny but chance where is my grandfather's collection and why am i reminded of it in these solemn moments he had not leisure to pursue his thoughts the curtain once more parted and a person stood before him whom he instantly perceived to be the country clergyman that had attended him and his companions on that pleasure sale of theirs he had a resemblance to the abbey though he seemed to be a different person with a cheerful countenance in a tone of dignity he said to guard from error is not the instructor's duty but to lead the erring pupil nay to let him quaff his error in deep satiating draughts this is the instructor's wisdom he who only tastes his air will long dwell with it will take delight in it as in a singular felicity while he who drains it to the dregs will if he be not crazy find it out the curtain closed again and wilhelm had a little time to think what air can he mean said he within himself but the error which has clung to me through my whole life that i sought for cultivation where it was not to be found that i fancied i could form a talent in me while without the smallest gifts for it the curtain dashed asunder faster than before an officer advanced and said in passing learn to know the men who may be trusted the curtain closed and wilhelm did not long consider till he found this officer to be the one who had embraced him in the count's park and had caused his taking yarno for a crimp how that stranger had come hither who he was were riddles to our friend if so many men cried he took interest in thee know thy way of life and how it should be carried on why did they not conduct thee with greater strictness with greater seriousness why did they favor thy silly sports instead of drawing thee away from them dispute not with us cried a voice 
thou art saved thou art on the way to the goal none of thy follies wilt thou repeat none wilt thou wish to repeat no luckier destiny can be allotted to a man the curtain went asunder and in full armor stood the old king of denmark in the space i am thy father's spirit said the figure and i depart in comfort since my wishes for thee are accomplished in a higher sense than i myself contemplated steep regions cannot be surmounted save by winding paths on the plain straight roads conduct from place to place farewell and think of me when thou enjoyest what i have provided for thee Wilhelm was exceedingly amazed and struck. He thought it was his father's voice, and yet in truth it was not. The present and the past alike confounded and perplexed him. He had not meditated long when the abbey came to view and placed himself behind the green table. Come hither, cried he to his marveling friend. He went and mounted up the steps. On the green cloth lay a little roll here is your indenture said the abbey take it to heart it is of weighty import wilhelm lifted opened it and read indenture art is long life short judgment difficult opportunity transient to act is easy to think hard to act according to our thoughts is troublesome every beginning is cheerful the threshold is the place of expectation the boy stands astonished his impressions guide him he learns sportfully seriousness comes on him by surprise imitation is born with us what should be imitated is not easy to discover the excellent is rarely found more rarely valued the height charms us the steps to it do not with the summit in our eye we love to walk along the plain it is but a part of art that can be taught the artist needs it all who knows it half speaks much and is always wrong who knows it wholly inclines to act and speaks seldom or late the former have no secrets and no force the instruction they can give is like baked bread savory and satisfying for a single day but flour cannot be sown and seed corn ought not to be ground words are good but they are not the best the best is not to be explained by words the spirit in which we act is the highest matter action can be understood and again represented by the spirit alone no one knows what he is doing while he acts aright but of what is wrong we are always conscious whoever works with symbols only is a pedant a hypocrite or a bungler there are many such and they like to be together their babbling detains the scholar their obstinate mediocrity vexes even the best the instruction which the true artist gives us opens the mind for where words fail him deeds speak the true scholar learns from the known to unfold the unknown and approaches more and more to being a master enough cried the abbey the rest in due time now look round you among these cases wilhelm went and read the titles of the rolls with astonishment he found lothario's apprenticeship jarno's apprenticeship and his own apprenticeship placed there with many others whose names he did not know may i hope to cast a look into these rolls in this chamber there is now nothing hid from thee may i put a question without scruple and you may expect a positive reply if it concerns a matter which is nearest your heart and ought to be so good then ye marvellous sages whose sight has pierced so many secrets can you tell me whether felix is in truth my son 
hail to you for this question cried the abbey clapping hands for joy felix is your son by the holiest that lies hid among us i swear to you felix is your son nor in our opinion was the mother that is gone unworthy of you receive the lovely child from our hands turn round and venture to be happy wilhelm heard a noise behind him he turned round and saw a child's face peeping archly through the tapestry at the end of the room it was felix the boy playfully hid himself so soon as he was noticed come forward cried the abbey he came running his father rushed towards him took him in his arms and pressed him to his heart yes i feel it cried he thou art mine what a gift of heaven have i to thank my friends for whence or how comest thou my child at this important moment ask not said the abbey hail to thee young man thy apprenticeship is done nature has pronounced thee free end of indenture from wilhelm meister's apprenticeship and travels by johann goethe translated by thomas carlyle